come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie review podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you are ready for it or not. Most of you probably are not. Uh, help us out in our quest for total world domination. All you got to do is go over to wherever you found us, hit the like, subscribe button, the star rating, give us a review. All that stuff helps us get found. Other like-minded folks like you, and they can the Freak Show family. We'll tell you later how you can uh, write into us, and uh, we'll read your stuff later on Igor's Mailbag. The Hopefully, when they're uh, doing all this liking, subscribing, giving us a review, they don't catch any viruses dun, on their dun, computers. Dun. I see what you did there. <laughs> that might be a segue, but first we got to introduce ourselves. These are the internet radio superstars. Michaela, Holly, John, and I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by Holly. Holly, what do we watch tonight? Uh, tonight we watched a movie called virus. Oh my God. From the year 1999. Of our Lord and Savior. Uh, directed by? <laughs> John Bruno. The fuck is that? Uh, you wouldn't know him as a director from anything, but you would know him for his work uh, on visual effects. He has done visual effects for movies like Poltergeist, Ghostbusters, Fright Night, The Abyss, Terminator 2, uh, Cliffhanger, Batman Returns, True Lies, Titanic. Uh, not, Alien, not know him Alien as a director. Uh, yeah. He directed... Uh, T2 3D. Did he? Uh, yes. uh, battle Across <laughs> Time. The, I have so uh, many more did. questions now, knowing he's a visual <laughs> effects guy. Only the oh, third best Terminator um, movie. That's true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> have you sure, seen it? Come on. No, I'm how sure do you Kyle, see it? I'm, Don't you have I'm, to go I'm to, sure. wasn't it like an IMAX thing in a theme park? It's uh, it's at the ride, the theme park, but it is on yeah. YouTube. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sure Colin appreciated his work on Avatar. We all know how much he loves Avatar. <laughs> Colin's favorite movie. Uh, Michaela, you would appreciate his work on Twilight, Breaking Dawn 1 and 2. That I, that I can't appreciate. I've right? been watching those a lot lately. So. Michaela likes the Twilight right? movies. <laughs> um, uh, he, did, he did direct a little uh, Star Trek Voyager, which uh, I don't know if you could tell by watching say. this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was that after this movie that he directed the Voyager? I think so. From, 19, from like 98 to 2005, he directed them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He also did way back, way, way back in the day, he did the, uh, if any of you are familiar with the movie Heavy Metal, the oh, yeah, uh, Heavy Metal. cartoon, yeah. he did the yeah, opening did with the, the soft landing segment. It was him and another guy. I think that was probably like one of his earliest, you know, dealio was probably before moving yeah. into visual effects. So he worked with James Cameron a lot. Um, yeah. I don't know if we can tell that. I mean, maybe if you look at like the technical credits on this movie, Galen Heard, which is James Cameron's former wife and longtime producer, produced this movie. Um, this guy, John Bruno, he turned down the opportunity to do the special effects for Titanic so he could come and do his first directorial uh, debut. That's right. So, Good move. <laughs> but he did. He did. He did work on Titanic, but he was. I don't think he was the supervisor. I think that's that was the line that he didn't get to like head it up or something like. Cause I think he did work on it a little bit. Yeah. Did Titanic win the special effects Oscar? Ooh, good question. Uh, I don't I'm know gonna bet it did. I'm gonna look it up. But I feel uh, like that's the thing I heard talked about the most about that movie when it came out was that how realistic everything looked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And how yeah. groundbreaking it was, you know. That Visual word got effects. thrown around a lot. Which back then, I I think it was. I think mm -hmm. it was pretty impressive. Yeah. Jesus, it won fucking everything. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it Best was special a, effects. Yes. I remember, it was a huge deal. Titanic. Uh, John Bruno is a Academy Award winner for visual effects. He won for uh, The Abyss. Yeah. As he should. Yeah. Uh, a lot of similarities, maybe, between The Abyss and this movie. We'll talk about so virus. Um, yeah, Sean, I thought this was going to be an outer space movie. I thought so, too. I always thought of this as an outer space movie. Why did you think it was an outer space movie? Well, the goddamn poster says it's an outer <laughs> space movie. <laughs> what are you talking about? It says on there well, it's in, in uh, space. It's in outer can... space. It doesn't say nothing about ships. 
I was very disappointed. I thought this was going to be in space. It would make a lot more sense for this to take place in outer space. I mean, it's basically in outer space. It's just the, un, you know, it's the undersea is the outer space of uh, Earth. Right. That, that a, makes it's sense. It's a spaceship. Right? It's a yeah, haunted, yeah. the haunted spaceship movie, it's right? The ship. It, yeah. The ghost ship. You say it's a ghost ship? Line. Yeah. Yeah. Where you Every discover... other ship movie came to mind while watching this movie. I know. Deep but... Rising, Ghost right? Ship. I was going to say, if you didn't automatically think of Deep Rising, then I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. that, uh, I think that was, remember, that was that was the year before this, right? Yeah, it was. With Treat Williams? Uh, and Treat, Treat Williams and Fonka Jensen. Yeah. yeah. Roger, Roger Ebert famously talked about this movie by saying, it's Deep Rising, which was one of the worst movies of, two, of uh, 1998, yeah. and this was by far worse. <laughs> And Jamie Lee Curtis apparently didn't like this movie too much either. She uh, was quoted as saying, what'd she say about it? It was like... Yeah, here, I'll I'll read it to you. (laughs) It's pretty funny. (laughs) It was in an IGN interview. She said, Rob Reiner for his 40th birthday had a bad show, show business party where everybody brought show business clips that was their most terrible. Rob's was playing a hippie on Gomer Pyle, USNC, singing uh, Blowing in the Wind. Virus is so bad that it's shocking. That would be all the time. That would be the all-time piece of shit. It's just dreadful. That's the only good reason to be in bad movies. Then when your friends have bad movie parties, you can say, "Ah, I've got the best one. I'm bringing virus." Wow, bad movie party sounds awesome. We right? have that every it's Saturday what night. What do you say? That's yeah. what. Yeah, Sean, we live it. <laughs> <I> <laughs> we live it every but week. With, but with celebrities who are in the movies. Oh, I mean, there you on. go. There you go. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, so uh, so she hates this movie. A lot of people yeah. also hated this movie. This movie didn't do well critically or uh, financially, I, possibly yeah. because it looked like you were saying Deep Rising, but like this was the period in time when it seemed like there were all these like haunted ship, haunted boat movies. Because um, Event, Event Horizon, yeah, that was like ninety seven, right? Am I was, right? Yeah, on that? that was a little before this. Yeah, it's right around there. God damn, there's something else just like went through my head that was like it was you know, well deep rising and this and sphere. Let's not forget sphere. Yeah. Um listen to our episode on sphere. That's right. <laughs> um listen to us go mad trying to figure out sphere. <laughs> this one is a little easier to follow, I'll give you that, than sphere. Uh probably because like there's really not much to it. This is it's billed as like a horror movie or a science fiction movie, but it's actually an action movie. Right, where the idea is to propel you as fast as possible through the plot, which is pretty predictable, right? To get you toward the big fiery explosive conclusion. Um, we got a cast of characters. Okay, so, uh, I mean, there is a cold open, I guess, um, on this movie, right? Um, starts off with a Russian freighter. Right? It's a science vessel, a ship. Out in the middle of uh, a typhoon, something, something. No, it isn't, right? It's not in the typhoon yet. Like, almost there. Not typhoon yet. Leia or something like that. Right. And this ship is tasked with communicating with the Mir space station. Am I right on this? Yeah. Yes. There's a bunch of Russian scientists. The only one that we may recognize is Joanna Pacula, right? Not related mm-hmm. to Scott Bakula or Alan J. Pacula, director. <laughs> Pack. Oh yeah, Al Pula. Yeah, um, we all know her, of course, from uh, Tombstone. Is that like her most favorite? If you're trying to put put a face to her, Tombstone. She was. Let's let's see. That's let's ask. Let's find out. Sean, do you do you recognize her from Tombstone? Did you finish that movie? <laughs> I'm still not sure, Michaela. <laughs> oh my god! I'm you're not sure if you it finished was, it. It was a rough night. Okay, I guess so. For listeners at home, Sean's been watching Tombstone in 10-minute increments for, what, like six weeks since, now? Since before quarantine. Since before yeah. quarantine. I thought you were so going to say Sean because since it came out. Her from that, then. No, I wouldn't recognize her anyway. Like, she <laughs> vaguely looks familiar, but it's because she probably looks like some other actress in a similar role at some point. I thought she was uh, Helena Bonham Carter there for a second. Mm. I haven't seen her recently. Horror fans would know her from uh, an old movie that I still haven't seen called The Kiss. Warlock, Armageddon, the second Warlock movie. Uh, Steven Seagal movie. Uh, fans would Ooh. know her from uh, Marked for Death. She was in that. So she's a Russian scientist on this. Polish lady playing Russian scientist. 
uh, and they get blasted by an energy wave from space, from the mirror. What happens there? What, what What's going on here? Space cloud. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they seem to... I, we don't entirely know what's happening, but we see them get, like, attacked by, like, bolts of lightning. Or infiltrated by bolts of lightning. I don't know what the Back best... Bolts of lightning. These were still the cool bolts of lightning. These like were like the, the old like the purple, like the purple lightning. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's like Palpatine shooting fucking lightning out of his hands coming from space. This is yeah. a good movie, lightning. Yeah, <laughs> this is the lightning that. Uh, this is the type of like explode. You know, it, the the energy wave that you get from uh, like your later day Star Trek Next Generation movies. That's what I was thinking. Or yeah. the, the, the reformatted um, Star Wars uh, endings where, like, the big energy wave comes out of the Death Star or Alderaan when they blow up. Yeah. It's that kind of stuff. Um, but anyway, something has been transmitted in this energy uh, blast from space to the Russian ship, and uh, we don't see what happens. So then we have to cut to our main uh, cast. This is uh, a motley crew, would you say, that runs a small fishing vessel led by Donald it's Sutherland even, as the yeah, salty it's not sea even a, captain. It's, it's not a fishing vessel. It's a tugboat. Oh, that's right. That's right. They tug. Like a, uh, like a, yeah, it's like a freight hauler. Yeah. And that's They're what, the tow trucks of the ocean. Yes, that's exactly right. And this is, I mean... Donald Sutherland's character, I guess, is the one that I have the best grasp on what motivates him. Money. Right? Money. Yeah, he's like, I want to tow this. He's got a cargo tug up or a, a cargo, you know, skiff, freight thing behind him. This is where we don't know our nautical shit for nothing on the Saturday yeah, night. What's the steering wheel called? The helm. The helm. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. If you've been following our show, we finally figured it out. Um, we will never forget that now. That's right. It's the helm. Uh, so a movie called the helm. That's right. We need to know our starboard and our aft and our right. Um, so we're landlocked yeah. here. I mean, give us a break. We never get out on boats. Um, so he's telling this thing because this is the this is the the cash. This is the money, right? And mm-hmm. uh, they drive into a, a typhoon. And yeah. they lose it. And so, well, this is a scene. <laughs> it, yeah, it's a whole thing. Yeah. It's dramatic. <laughs> like, there's history. There's, 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 there's shit going on. Okay, well, if there's history going on, tell me anything about any of the characters, how they know each other, what they, anything about them. Apparently, they've worked with Donald Sutherland before. At least two of them have. This is uh, William Baldwin. He's in the cast. And uh, the other fellow, I'm not sure. The guy who said he's Cuban later on. Who looks like the low-rent uh, Kevin Pollock. <laughs> that was the best. Squeaky. It's like, I'm not American. I'm Cuban. Yeah, well, he thought squeaky. they were Russian, okay. right? Squeaky. squeaky. Right, there yeah, you go. I remember Squeaky. squeaky. Yeah. Uh, they had worked with him before and hate working with this guy. You know, Donald Pleasant. But, or Donald right, Sutherland. But have, but have done it again for some reason. Yeah. Um, have any of the other of the uh, other crew members like ever worked with this guy before? Or, like, what's the story here? I think Jamie Lee there's, Curtis has been working with him for a while. There's the the like the co captain or the first mate or whatever he is. I, they said that they've worked together for like 20 years or something like that. I never um, would have oh, got yeah. that out of the would. movie unless he said it. But yeah, that's Marshall Bell. Well, you remember yeah. as the gym paranoid. teacher from Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two. He was also well, in I'm... Total Recall, wasn't he? Oh, uh, yeah. And, and uh, Starship Troopers, where he plays a similar character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're right. What I was confused about is Jamie Lee Curtis's role, because she, I'm getting she's like she's a the... navigator, Colin or uh, Holly. She says it. She's the navigator. <laughs> she's the okay. navigator. I don't know what that means. Yeah, because no. I'm getting because I get like the strong like like moral scientist vibe from her and. I'm like, how does that fit in with a, with a crew? She's she an advocator. Me... Would you say she has a strong moral compass? Dun, dun, dun. I'm full of them tonight. <laughs> Sean's just, she reminded he's, he's me of uh, Numi Rapace in Prometheus, mm. as yes. being like, I'm gonna be the like conscious conscience for like the rest of the crew because they're bankrupt like morally. Yes. And it, but it conflicts with me being a scientist, you know. 
-hmm. Which is a trope in these types of movies that I don't really understand. No, not at all. I don't get it at all. The only, the only part that I thought like they were trying to back up her motive is when she talks about how her dad was a military man. And I'm like, okay, so what does that have to do with anything at all? Yeah. It means she knows maritime law, Holly. Exactly. <laughs> That's about it. So she can pull that out at a plot point and go like, I know that you can't, you know, whatever, the salvage on this vessel isn't going to work out or whatever. Yeah. Um, right. yeah, it doesn't work out for those people on board. They can't claim it. Yeah, I mean, I got to admit, I don't know anything. I've watched the whole movie. I don't really know anything about her. I think she's supposed <laughs> to be the Ripley of this movie. I think we're supposed to have a little bit this of is very aliens. aliens. Yeah, mm-hmm. deja vu. There's a couple of things in here, but probably aliens, you figure, is like the big uh, like uh, keystone. I think so, because Woods and the, uh, I forgot his name, the black guy, roam around the bowels of the ship like... Richie. Um, You're Richie. 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 Yeah, Richie. Who, who's yeah. also Mason um, at some point. Richie Mason. Um, yeah. Richie Mason. Um, Maybe it's, it's Mason it's, Richie. That's the Yafet Kodo. Um, and Brett of the alien. Dean Morgan. Yeah, Dean Morgan combo. Yeah. We get a Newt. Uh, basically, Joanna pa- Pacula gets yep. to be the Newt uh, character. Uh, she's found hiding on the ship later and warns them of the danger. Basically, these, these people who are uh, on this tugboat experience a uh, typhoon. They lose their cargo, and so then it's like, well, what are we going to do? We're out here, and we need a, you know, there's almost a mutiny uh, setting up the dynamic, I guess, that maybe goes nowhere between uh, Donald Sutherland's maybe Irish sea captain, because he's got an accent, maybe, uh, pointing a gun at, at Billy Baldwin. Yeah, if you're just on the sea for a long time, do you just develop that accent? <laughs> like, I think that's what happens, right? Like, uh, 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 what's his name? In the lighthouse. Oh, uh, Willem Dafoe. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were going to go with Quint from Jaws, but maybe that's where you just have same to go deal, with Same deal. Same deal. Um, I was thinking the sea captain from The Simpsons. <laughs> Yar. Ar, 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 yeah, that maybe it does. Um, all that salt. It's a salt wind and all that stuff. I think um, so. It warps your it warps your tongue. Yeah. All that salt. <laughs> I think that's what happens. Well, I think um, it's isolation madness too. <laughs> that could be isolation <laughs> madness <laughs> turns you <laughs> Irish. I think so. You know how uh, we've been isolated for a while. I've been just walking around going yar. It's fun to do. I've become a bit more British day by day. Right. He's just yelling yar. You just, are you yelling cat. your cat too? Going, Oi! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, um, I'm going a little nuts. The. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there's a there, so this opening is extremely dramatic. I think this is because uh, we're dropping into a movie. We've had our cold open, dramatic middle of the storm sequence where shit's exploding and well, or sinking, and you know the engine room has been flooded and we're sinking, and we got people pointing guns at each other. Nobody trusts anybody, and you know who your factions are. Actually, I don't. I do know that the two guys you're talking about had some prior history. Um, yeah. but I don't know, like, you know, uh, if they're setting, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis up to be like the Ripley of this movie, it kind of like just some type of military background beyond my dad was an admiral, uh, you know, something that says that she's capable of, of doing some of this, but that, that wasn't there. None of them, even Billy Baldwin. I'm like, was he supposed to be like a marine or in the navy or something an ex like are these just all merchant seamen one of the guys uh cliff curtis is in this movie ladies and gentlemen cliff curtis who you may not recognize the name but he's been in goddamn every movie ever made including the meg you've seen him in like four or five things at least yeah what would he he's most famous for well he's in dr sleep we said recently Mm -hmm. cliff Um, curtis with the with the luscious locks yeah, he's got long curly hair in this movie. Long curly hair, and he's Hawaiian. Apparently. He's in the Fast and Furious movies too. Yeah, he's been in everything. Yeah, you would recognize is his it, face if you saw him. Is he on the wall yet? Uh, uh he was in. Um, hold on, I looked it up while we were watching because I'm pretty sure he is. Um, so he is in this, obviously. Mm-hmm. What was the other thing we mentioned? We did the Meg. The Meg. <laughs> the Meg. So that's two. Did you guys cover Sunshine? No. No. Dang, because he's in that. Um, I didn't realize he was in 10,000 BC. Ugh. Oh, yeah. 
That's a terrible movie. Yeah, it, Abr- Abr- was you guys only spoke in English in 10,000 BC? Because in that movie they do. Yeah. They do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do. It's not Apocalypto. It's the Apocalypto ripoff by Roland Emmerich, where they speak English. <laughs> Apparently he's going to be in the next four Avatar movies. So you know, oh, Colin, there you go. Movie? Hey, I like... Okay. <laughs> They haven't seen Avatar, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. If you can believe it. None of them have actually seen it. It's amazing. It's like the highest nope. grossing movie in the world. Nope. I'm the only person sitting here who's seen the movie. Um, <laughs> but I brought him I up because... one more to get on the wall. One more. Okay, okay. well, we can probably Wait, make Wait, did you guys do happen. Deep Rising? No, we haven't done that yet. He's in that, too. <laughs> <laughs> the linchpin. <laughs> That's funny. And the Meg. Type so this what? is the guy, if you're doing the like scientific research vessel out in the middle of you know whatever, the monsters, he, Cliff Curtis. He's your guy. <laughs> Producers call him they, up. They really missed out in Deep Blue Sea, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, why, is he in, why isn't he in that one? Um, right. Well, that was around this same time too, right? There's like a theme going on here. Yeah. There's kind of nautical horror movies with a science uh, facility going to shit. This is probably all. Well, when was the? Well, the abyss was like eighty nine. That was when you had the um, eighty nine, I think. Yeah. Well, that was the year of the three of them, right? Leviathan, Deep Star Six, and the Abyss. And we just had one in the theater this year before the the clampdown underwater so this is still a genre oh, yeah, yeah. that's oh, still yeah. going on um but i mentioned him because like his character i don't have a grasp on because uh he can't swim which you think a guy on a boat like this is going to be a prerequisite that they check out before you get on the boat wasn't there a thing in the meg though too wasn't there someone who couldn't swim in the meg I um, forgot most of that movie. Uh, I think there was somebody. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was like a butt of a joke at some point, and then it so, actually it was like, like the black guy. Out. Yeah. Hmm. Probably. That's all I remember about the Meg. Well. I feel like we're discovering a lot of uh, boat movie tropes here today. Yeah, this is like a subgenre <laughs> that we're going to have to explore. The, uh, I mean, is that what we're calling? It's just a, a boat sub-genre? movie genre. That is. Uh, yeah. I did that on purpose. Put it down. It's done. Go home. Good night. It's not going to get better than that. We are home, Sean. We are home. Oh, fuck. Yeah. No, this is like, well, I don't know. I mean, I suppose you could group the space movies, you know, haunted spaceship movies in there, too, with this. But yes, most of them, for budget reasons, take place on a boat. This one, I think they actually did. Like, uh, wasn't it a derelict boat or something that was going to be sunk by the U.S. Navy or Russian Navy? Yeah. What was it? Yeah, they pulled it. Uh, I think it was the U.S. Navy. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, okay. they pulled it out of wreckage and restored one side of it because they couldn't afford to do all of it. That's why we only see one side of the ship. Right. That's smart thinking. We're only going to see this side on camera, so paint this side. Um, yeah. But and so, they did it, I think, in like 2009 or something like that. Oh, they did sink it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. You don't sink it. You scuttle it. See, look at that. Look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Ah, Maritime over you. here. Oh, you, you scuttle it. You got a nautical book near you? <laughs> Um, oh, are you reading Old Man in the Sea right now? <laughs> well, this movie, actually, maybe this is a good time to uh, mention the screenwriter of this film. I think he pronounces his last name Farrar, P.F. Farrar, Chuck Farrar. Chuck Farrar is a comic book uh, author slash novelist slash screenwriter. He actually wrote this movie as a... Um, as a comic book for dark house comics. And so I believe that he is on, um, he wrote a lot of dark horse, uh, movies that got made. I don't think he did the mask, but he did barbed wire. Barb wire. He, did, he did barbed wire. He did the jackal and he did hard target. He did dark man. Yes. Yeah. He did dark man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, he also wrote Navy seals, which is the Charlie Sheen, Michael <laughs> Bean, Bill Paxton movie, Navy seals. Because guess what? Chuck Farrar was a Navy SEAL. He was actually, uh, like, I was looking this guy up. In 1983, he witnessed the uh, the Marine barracks bombing in Beirut. He was there. Uh, apparently, he was one of the SEALs that was responsible for the capture of uh, Abu Abbas, or Abu Abbas, if I'm pronouncing it right, the Palestinian yeah. Liberation Organization guy 
who uh, uh, hijacked the Achille Laro, killed uh, this disabled Jewish American guy, Lin, uh, Leon Klingenhofer. Klinghoffer? They threw his body overboard. Then he sought refuge in Iraq with uh, Saddam Hussein. And Chuck Farrar was one of the guys who, who got him. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. And then this guy. So, and then he so retreated was, to Hollywood. This is before he turned into my dad, right? Yeah. Like, holy yeah. shit. And then he came back, started writing <laughs> comic <Jesus> books. Christ. <laughs> and movies. <laughs> so there you go. So now Damn. you know. Navy SEALs, when you watch it, you're like, oh shit, this is like a fucking documentary. I thought that was just a clerk's joke. Who knew? Mm. <laughs> what was the joke? Uh, there's just a line in Clerks that's like, do you have Navy SEALs? Oh. I think I think Scott Motor says it. I don't know. Oh, you well, got to see uh, it. I haven't seen yeah. Clerks in a while. Yeah. But you can see Navy SEALs. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, Farrar also appears as a counterterrorism expert on uh, TV shows and all that. So, uh, yeah. Wow. Guy's got a resume. And then he wrote yeah, Virus. Did. I guess he wrote it, <laughs> I heard, as a comic book because at the time that he wrote it, he thought that, uh, I don't know, for the visual effects level of Hollywood movies, yeah. you wouldn't be able to do it. Mm. Yeah, he originally wrote, he started to write the screenplay, and then that's exactly right. He didn't think that they'd be able to pull off the effects yet, um, because it was in, like, um, the comic was published in, like, 92. um, And then, obviously, eventually, he did write the the screenplay. I kind of wish it would have been made in 92 instead, because I would have rather seen a bunch of, like, stop-motion claymation stuff. (laughs) <laughs> like RoboCop 2 like I would have rather seen shit like that than what's in this movie <laughs> yeah this is back in the cool. age when like the CG like watching this tonight I'm like wow CG actually has come a long way well I mean we know that I guess it has but I mean the composites maybe that's it the compositing looks better now uh, I'm sure more uh, photorealistic more finished less visible to the eye than it is here you can clearly tell that the people in the foreground are standing in front of a green screen, and the thing in the background is, you know, uh, not actually there. Um, mm-hmm. This is a monster movie. Uh, they find out, of course, once they get on board the derelict ship, uh, they find Joanna Pacula, um, you know, the Newt character, hiding in a closet. She unlo- She pops out of a closet and unloads, like, an entire clip of a U- Uzi at them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At close range, doesn't hit, like, five guys in the room. No, nope, they're amazing. really fast, Colin. <laughs> the bullets? Oh, the guys. I see what you're saying. The guys. Yeah. <laughs> Both. <laughs> As they die, they jump out of the way. Uh, so we're saying it's a monster movie. Holly, what? Um, uh, so what is on this ship? What is what is this monster like? Well, this monster does not have a form of its own. It is just a being of energy of some sort, um, and it needs to be harnessed. So it infiltrates the computer system, and from the computer system it begins to absorb into various robots, and then after it kills the crew, starts to also take on organic matter. There you go. There you go. (laughs) You kind of make you wonder why it needs the organic matter. Originally I thought, so, so, yeah. So basically, the, the, it's an, in, intel, an electric intelligence. Uh, what was it? Not Randy. What was the guy's name? Rody. R- uh, the Richie? character Richie. Thank you very much. Uh, explains it as lightning that thinks. Right. At some point. Uh, and I always love this. Right in the movies, where because you have electricity in your in your computer system, that it, it's able to take over the ship. Uh, download. It's accessing our mainframe, right? Is Sean's so favorite. So much mainframe accessing in this movie. Sean's favorite part. Oh, I love mainframes. Your job doesn't have a mainframe in the basement that controls no. all the doors. I have and... quite a collection here, though. I have many mainframes. There you go. Well, you just have the one. The, that's why they call it the mainframe. It's the one. Well, I, but the, the, it doesn't. This, but every place has a mainframe. Yeah. There are multiple mainframes. The mainframe is not the mainframe. I don't know if Point break, Colin. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so it, it, it's able to to learn, you know, English. It understands people, it understands all this stuff. So here's what I was getting at: when it first, so we do see like uh, because this is a science ship, and they restore the power to the ship. 
um, they accidentally turned the robot back on. Apparently, Joanna Pacula had gone around um, cutting all the cables to try and, and eventually powered the ship down, which basically put the robot thing monster into a dormant state, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, these guys come in, inadvertently turn everything back on. So first of all, our first look at it <clears throat> is um, in the uh, like assembly room. Is that what was going on there? Yes. Uh, yeah. This is a room with a lot of robot, like, you know, arms that, you know, like you, you see in like car factories or whatever, futuristic car factories, modern car factories. <laughs> futuristic. Hasn't happened yet. <laughs> and yes. they're, they're building all of these uh, small little robots. Now, here's the, okay, so, so for what this looks like, if I said the word erector set, do you guys know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Okay. If nothing yeah. else. Just think about the erector set from uh, uh, the Sandlot. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys, you, you guys played with these when you were kids, or what? You built the little robots with the. This would have been better if it, if all these monsters were made out of connects. Hell okay. yeah! That would, <laughs> that, would been, that would have been much better. Well, this I one's. Probably would have moved better. They were made from connects. They probably would have moved better, honestly. What year did those they, come out? I mean, are those those are nineties. Those are like I think in the nineties. That's a yeah, that's definitely a nineties. Yeah. So yeah, the connects were the erector sets of the nineties, ah, but they were more so colorful. Good. They were really colorful, yeah. They were pretty. <laughs> well, they're trying to go with the scary-looking erector set-looking thing, metal, right? Yeah. yeah, it's all metal. But uh, funny to me, or was it funny to you, that like um, all of the initial robots, they look like bugs? Mm. And yeah, the spiders yeah. and bugs, and, and uh, they have wings. Why is that stuff? always a go-to design? Because bugs. I feel like creepy. we see that so much. Isn't right? It why don't they like just a... make little people like this big? That'd be terrifying. That would be. Well, you see, like, even these uh, guys now are doing these, like, robot competitions where they're basically building these things for real. Battlebots? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Battlebots and all I that. I love the shit out of Battlebots, man. Oh, yeah. Old. I love Battlebots. I was just watching a match the other day for you? whatever reason. <laughs> Don't they... you love it when there's so much hype built around a specific Battlebot and then they're, like, knocked out within, like, what? 10 seconds? Like, 10 yeah. seconds. I love it. <laughs> It's so satisfying. I know. Did you see that actual like mech battle between the U.S. mech and the the Japanese mech? You Are guys, you talking oh, about the movie Pacific Rim, Colin? No, <laughs> this is, right. You'd think that I was, but this not actually a happened. As, uh, not many people know that, but it's uh, actually a movie. <laughs> but this actually did happen. Like I'm saying, it actually did. Ha- like the the Japanese. And they built giant mech. Built this like wearable mech suit. It's like a big ass thing. You got to sit in the cockpit of it. And the Americans were building one at the same time. And so the Americans challenged the Japanese <laughs> to a fight because they're like, well, we got these giant robots. What are we going to do with them? They got to fight. The Japanese guys are like, of course, America. Like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Whatever. And then it was a pay per view of that. This, it's now on YouTube a couple of years All right, ago. well, I was going to say, well, then don't tell me who won, because I'm going to go fucking okay, watch I won't. this. They go I was like going to say, maybe we should rounds. do a bonus episode on this. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should do a commentary on that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll decide who we think is going to win up front, and then see how it goes. The future is what right that? now. This is, yeah. We're already there. Like We've real, already had giant fighting was that robots. Like, was that like Real Steel with Hugh Jackman? Right. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I'm sorry. I have a little bit of a tangent about real steel. Do you mind if I tell it real quick? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're the only person in the world who's going to have a tangent about real steel. <laughs> yeah. um, so, at my old job, I had this boss. He was a really cool dude, but he was really bad at movie like literacy. Like He was really bad at knowing what movies were called and like who was in them and stuff. And <laughs> We were on a flight together, and he watched a movie, and he kept falling asleep and waking it up. And At the end of the flight, I was like, well, what did you watch? And he's describing it to me, and he's like, it's this movie where like Hugh Jackman's like in Japan and there's like giant robots fighting. And I was like, real steel. And he was like, no, that's not it. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's what it. it is. That's the movie. I like pull it up. I show up to him. He's like, no, that's not it. And he keeps talking. Probably about Wolverine. It. It's Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cause of the suit of armor at the, Oh, I gotcha. At the end is a yeah. giant metal samurai. <laughs> he said a Hugh Jackman movie with giant robots. And I was like, that's real steel, dude. <laughs> That's funny. Wow. <laughs> wow. Was that was that his first experience with Wolverine? 
I, I think he, well, so because we worked in like, you know, film editing and stuff, we had seen the leaked version of uh, the Origins movie that everyone saw before the CGI effects were finished that was really bad. So like that was his previous exposure and then this movie. That's funny. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> well, movie robots are like, uh, I mean, they're a thing, right? I mean, everybody loves a good movie robot, uh, especially if you can design like a, a new one that we haven't seen before. Um, I don't know. Did if they he's... for this movie, Colin? Or did uh, they rip that shit off? Uh, what did they rip it off from, Sean? What 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 influences did you see? Uh, your favorite movie, Hardware. Oh yeah, there's a lot of hardware in the look of this movie. A lot of hardware yeah. in this movie. Holy shit. Yeah. They all felt like robot versions of Brundlefly at a certain point. <laughs> oh, true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, now that you're saying that. Yeah. yeah. There's also the Saturn 3 robot I think in yeah. there a little bit. Um the eyes somewhere in the 90s that became like a thing. You had the red um the red lenses, you know, like and multi-eyed uh things that became yes. popularized by the matrix but i think that comes from japanese anime or something where you kind of have oh yeah a... they did look like the matrix but doesn't this this also goes to michaela what you were saying this also augments the kind of like the bug um uh look of the thing right that it that we're, we're playing on the idea that like humans are afraid of bugs so we keep on i mean even the alien itself in the movie alien looks like a giant bug of some type yes right uh, right, but this gives it that whatever the multi-eyed thing. So you run into that deal. That uh, what's that fear of multi-eyed? That everybody had a problem with what the new iPhone oh, yeah. had it, and they're like, rrr, rrr, it's got too many eyes looking at me. Yeah, and their cameras, hippo uh, hippophobia or something, something like that. Yeah. Well, this thing, um, it. I thought that they were making a nod toward Terminator with the whole, because mm-hmm. uh, basically the robot starts dismantling the people that it kills and um okay so there's multiple robots because they're all controlled by a central uh central evil intelligence robot the big one right they were gonna like the alien queen we're gonna hold that one off until the end right and they are all connected to it now i have a question do you think this was in the script or do you think this was the special effects guys going Hey, we need cables hooked up to these things to make a move anyway. Why don't we just make it part of the movie? Because this must have been their dream come true. It's just like, hey, you can build these things, and we'll let the cables show. You right? don't have to hide That's it. That's true. That's a good point. That's a very good point. See, I didn't understand this at all when they actually addressed it in the movie. Joanna Pacula says that basically she's been going through cutting cables, right? Because that's how yeah. it's communicating. Apparently just through the wires, right? Yeah, um, no Wi-Fi. So all of the, okay, so is it, but is that what's going on? Because I can't remember when Wi-Fi came into my life, but I'm assuming we're saying that that was not a thing in 1999. Wi-Fi technology? No, I don't, th- I don't no. think it was. Right? Internet was, was, but not wireless internet. No, um, in, ni- in 99, like, cable modem was a brand new thing. Okay. So, uh, so but I had mean, to be what, hooked up. They, well, we had yeah. radio and RF and all that shit beforehand and whatever i mean that's why i'm like when did the borg come around on star trek they had to be like mid 90s i looked it up it was 89 89 that was early okay yeah. but that's supposed so that's to why be I was the like, future wow, this movie's just knocking it off yeah because that's basically what we've got going on here there's a central intelligence right that has the design a bunch looks of... exactly the same yeah it has a... right because it basically it graphs all these people onto itself so you got like a robot that has like a human skull or a human head with some skin stretched over its chest area what the so the point of this is this is a nod to the terminator right where it's like I it's supposed so, to yeah. so they initially see it as a friend it looks like a human and then it unloads on you with its gatling guns but even like the, like the light coming through the eye and the way the thing around the eye on the face was, that's exactly what the Borg looked like. Yeah. Yeah, you have to have uh, some I kind still, of... Like, uh, I still lay claim to the fact that they're, they're uh, uh, ripping off Return of the Living Dead 3. Um, this is definitely Riverman. That's right. He was a character who was... Uh, like had a He bunch was the of homeless guy who and... got uh, transformed into like a half human half robot thing at the zombie facility yeah for whatever reason they put a bunch of shit on him uh to control him yeah well 
there's uh so this this alien thing basically wants to kill all humans is that um like an accurate accurate description of its motivation here well it wants them for parts <laughs> well what do you the mean? side effect the side effect is they die if that's it's if its mission is to kill all humans. It's being wildly inefficient about this because just being a ship, like a drift in the ocean, is not a great way of going about that. Okay. Well, well, yeah, but that wasn't that's that's the problem he's having. He did not the virus did not expect to be in that situation. But if the virus can control the ship, then what the fuck is it doing? Well, you're saying well, the, the virus well, it got it all got shut down by the, what's her name. Well, you're saying the virus, so this is, um, so the virus of the title is it's a computer virus. That's what we're saying? Correct. No, it's the humans. Oh, it's the human. <laughs> what do you mean, Sean? We are, I mean, the, the virus tells us we're the virus. Wait, it's explain very, it's this. Very what do you mean it, what do you okay mean if you don't it tells understand us it. this? Um, it's a very complicated story. <laughs> but well, the humans gotta... are the virus. Have you not figured that out by now, especially in this day and age? I know, the screenwriters are so cynical. It's like human beings are a virus. <laughs> I didn't even understand it in the context of this movie, right? Where the robot is like, you know, you're the vi It actually says, you're the virus. Oh, we have to talk you about this fucking virus. scene because this was the greatest scene in the movie. I howled uh, with laughter <laughs> because it was so Same. fucking ridiculous. I could not believe what I was hearing. Okay, well, tell us about this. What, what happens here? computer says that it has done studies and that humans are like noxious and selfish and they destroy everything and they have no redeeming qualities and then it just says in big bold letters on the screen and we hear a voice say out loud you are virus you are virus this is when somebody gets the idea to like we can talk to it this calls to mind a scene identical aim scene chat with this virus in uh, uh in like, a sphere this is the abyss well, I was thinking this is the abyss. Oh fuck, that's right. They do it then sphere too. Yeah. This is every sci-fi movie that they're talking to the computer. <laughs> but sphere, the computer they were does not like us. Through the computer as well. Yeah. They were chatting with it. Yeah. And so, then, and in the abyss, they were. It was using the aliens were using like type to communicate with Ed Harris. It's like the same thing. Well, see, this that's why how this one ups the ante, right? Because it actually somehow uh, comes through the speakers. It actually has like a voice and understands English and stuff. Uh, these computers always sound like, even though they're supposed to, they're sold to us as hyper intelligent beings from beyond the stars, right? Uh, whenever they communicate with the lowly humans, they sound like complete total morons. Yeah, they're monosyllabic Neanderthals at this point. Yeah, you are virus, you know. Well, you maybe. die. Are they Russian too? Yeah, you, you are virus. <laughs> yes. You are virus. I will break you. I would, yes, I will break you. You, break. you will be breaked. English, do you speak English? You know, it's. English, so, motherfucker, do you speak it? Yeah. Um, that's that why they got away better. They got away from that with, like, the Transformers with Bumblebee, right? Like, he, he gets to just kind of dial in what he's saying, and that becomes an entertaining thing on its own. Back Is then, it entertaining? You have the synthesized voice. Is it? I don't know. It was for the Did first he, movie. In the first movie, didn't he use the radio to exclusively speak? Yeah. Yeah. It was the most annoying shit. I mean, uh, fuck those movies, but... <laughs> didn't they make some bullshit thing about, like, oh, he doesn't have vocal cords or some shit, so he, right. he has to use but, the radio. It was so right. stupid. Yeah, and we can never fix this. We're automated beings that come from the most technologically advanced planet in the known universe, yet his fucking voice box cannot be fixed. Let's stop talking about Transformers movies. <laughs> but Sean, there's like five of them we could talk about. Oh, I know. Let's talk about the dinosaur one. Ugh. Yeah, I think there's more. <laughs> what than about that. the what about the fact that Anthony Hopkins is in Transformers movies? Oh yeah, I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, I mean, Woo! isn't Mark Wahlberg in like two of them? Yeah, yeah. But that's that's like par for the course for Mark Wahlberg. Sure. Anthony Hopkins, not so much. Yeah. Well, I mean, this, uh, so the robot does communicate with them. Uh, it, it singles out, or Donald Sutherland, basically, he singles himself out. He's the prime human, he, he tells the robot. And he's, he's going to help dominant, it. Dominant, the dominant life form? Yeah, the dominant life form. Yeah. This guy's got an ego. I mean, that's what you, that's what you do, right? You're I, like, I'd be like, hey, I'm Sean, I'm, you know, 
I'm all right. I'm, I'm, I'm not Sean, dominating anything. Sean, well, actually, well, someone well, asks you if you're a god, you say yes. <laughs> yes. And that's very true. That's rule number one. Yeah. Although, when the when the um, computer asks him, he's like, are you the dominant life form? He never says he is. He just says, what can I do for you? Well, I thought oh, he, he said, he, he, yeah, he typed it in. He's the dominant life I form. am the dominant life, or ever, ever, what was his name? Uh, like, ever uh, Everton is the dominant life form. I am Everton. Yeah, there you go. He's identifying uh, himself visually to uh, the thing. And so yeah, he goes sure. and talks to it. Of course, it ends up uh, 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 sucking him in, you know, and making him basically its prime avatar for the climax of the movie. Well, after he goes <laughs> to the lair and is greeted by a doorman, which you guys <laughs> laughed out loud at other parts. This got me. <laughs> he, he pulls over his jacket and he's like, uh, I'm, the, I'm the captain of the Sea Star. And the thing goes, Ugh, and just opens the door for him. <laughs> The funniest shit. The big like, okay. uh, robot just standing there. Yeah, yeah, it's great What's stuff. Butler. Well, I mean, what you got? The robots are taking over the ship. They're everywhere. So, but yeah, I guess that's a thing. So they have to be. We were saying before, all the cabling is so that they can be connected to the main, uh, the main intelligent, um, you know, the brain. Right, for lack of a better yeah, word. Yeah, you know how, like, in Rise of Skywalker, Palpatine's kind of like on the claw machine thing with the cables hanging behind him? That's all oh. the creatures in this movie. But I don't, what Holy I don't shit. understand is, uh, at one point, they, they cut the cable, right, in order to do an autopsy on one of them, try and figure out what it is, right, your, your thing scene or whatever. And um, they... They cut open its brain, and in its brain they find what they say is a power source in there. So, like, the thing does have the ability to be autonomous. It's just not connected to the hive mind if it's not plugged in with a cable. Is that what I'm getting out of this? I guess. So now imagine this is your monster. Your monster has to be connected by a, a cluster of cables all throughout the entire ship in order to be able to communicate with all the other uh you know robots on the rest of the ten the cable tendrils mm-hmm. yeah you know we haven't really talked about here i mean we're talking about uh donald pleasant or donald donald sutherland and joanna pacula right but we're not really talking about jamie lee curtis and william baldwin who are the right, heroes the, of our movie the stars of the movie <laughs> well the stars i feel like they're not in it that much i, feel I like know they're not doing too much yeah yeah mm-hmm. the, well, the, billy that's what... baldwin's not doing shit man they're Maybe if they had affected the an accent in such as way. Donald Sutherland's, we'd be okay. Yeah. But that's the thing, right? Their characters don't do anything to advance the plot. I mean, basically, it just becomes, it's more of an ensemble drama, and they're the two that are the luckiest. I wouldn't even say the most capable. They're just the luckiest by virtue of the screenplay to be able to survive all the way to the end. And because other characters uh, do that whole selfless sacrifice, you know, kill themselves so you can escape deal, that happens a number of times. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, why I, their I, lives I, are more important than anybody else, I, I don't know. <laughs> no. Uh, I, I, it's like, you've got the key to like, whatever, and we, you have to survive. And that's the stakes right, that you need, like, right? There's only one seat. It's for you. I'd be like, get the fuck out of that chair. Like when they're when they uh, uh, they get the their distress call is answered, and they're like, no, we can't talk to them because there's a chance the thing will get off the boat. Fuck that! Call that boat over here. Get it here. I'm getting <laughs> off this boat. I don't care what this thing does. It's somebody else's problem. Get, how, I'm not dying like, for this. How do they think that would even happen? Wouldn't it have to like plug into the other ship's mainframe for that to be possible? Uh, well, the thing apparently. Oh, it wants to get off because there's a there's a whole world out there. It wants to plug right. into and yeah. But if it has to stay connected, how is it getting off? Well, maybe it can go back to lightning form and like jump over to the other boat. Or the. But it hasn't the, done that so far. All we've seen is that it's contained to this one boat. I would take yeah. my chances. Well, isn't... yeah, that's what I'm saying. Send a, send a small lifeboat over, you know, if nothing else. Yeah. Well, fuck it. Drive right up to the side of it. I'll just jump off and I'll be done. Isn't the giant robot monster thing that appears at the end after the Donald Sutherland, uh, you know, drone is killed, isn't that like the contained, isn't that the big bad? I mean, if he jumped to the other ship, mm-hmm. he's taking, he is the, that is the monster, right? I think, I think yeah. So, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, well then that's how yeah, that's how so they got to prevent that thing from getting off the boat. The only way to do that is to dunk it in water and that means sh- sink the ship. Um this of course well, Donald Sutherland didn't want that to happen because he wants the whatever uh, 300 million dollars that the ship will bring on the open market as a salvage. Um yeah, he's insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. His, his actions are insane throughout this movie. Although we find he's pretty much an insane person this whole time. Right. Well, Richie also what? goes insane. I don't know what happened to him. I mean, <laughs> uh, he all of a sudden goes off, dresses like a robot. I actually thought, like, at one point, I was like, Wait, "Did he get? Did he get assimilated, or is he just? He's got like, you know, cabling and all that stuff all over him. Like, mm-hmm. what's he? What's he doing? He's, he's a he's a military man. It's camouflage. Well, that's a smart move. Yeah. So he is military. Apparently. Yeah, he said he was military. Okay. Yeah. I think he said, I think Navy, yeah, I think. Okay, well, then that would make sense. I'm yeah, telling you, these characters the Navy, are ciphers. Yeah. You, you, I mean, like, how do you have to kind of intuit this stuff almost to try and <laughs> figure out who they are? <laughs> um, they There's a series of explosions. The movie ends with a bunch of explosions and action scenes. Uh, Pretty, how do they try to kill it the first time? Was that Which, they try and, they try and flood a uh, flood it with fuel and then blow it up? Oh, and there's a bomb. They make a bomb. Was that the Joanna Pacula uh, sacrifice there? No. Uh, after it finds their 15 minute bomb, then she sacrifices herself for whatever reason. Yeah. Is that at one point Richie tries to shoot it with a rocket launcher too? There you go. Chekhov's rocket launcher. It's introduced very early on when everybody's running right. around this place with the the entire armory. Of the Russian ship. I love All right, that. Pacula, Pacula throws one of those grenades in, into him and blows it up. Yeah. Yeah, because That's she's a in one. a room with a whole bunch of, uh, like, uh, gas canisters, right? Yeah. <clears throat> the whole thing explodes. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is, uh, sur- it, it survives this. Because, that's right, Jamie Lee Curtis at some point gets captured by the thing. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and strung up, you know, hangs her up and basically then, you know, like, you know does the whole... Um, what are the torture of Han Solo at at, uh, at Bespin? You're gonna burn something by your face? Unless yeah. You tell me where the detonator is. Right. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> that was pretty good, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it. Um, <laughs> the fact that this thing wouldn't know these things. It's got cameras all over. Like, isn't it a part of the system? And it can whatever. Yeah. It wants yeah. To know you where think. The, yeah. Uh, and then these, but that attempt fails, even though it seems to blow it up pretty goddamn good. Then they have to deal with the Donald Sutherland. That right? Isn't that when Donald Sutherland comes up and he's got that little monocle that we love so yeah, much from movies like the, yeah, the little visor on his eye. Oh, zzz, yeah, zzz, it flips. They it deal flips with, in. They deal with him. Be, they deal with him before the big bad. Okay. Yeah. All right. They burn him with thermite. Right. Yes. Then they deal with the big bad. That didn't kill the big yeah. bad. So now we're down to our last uh, two people. Uh, this is Jamie Lee Curtis and William Baldwin. They remember, of course, that there is a uh, rocket escape. It's not a shuttle. Seat. Rocket yeah. escape yeah, it's, seat. It's, it's an ejection seat. <laughs> yeah. This is great. So uh, it was rigged. It had, but it had to be rigged up. Richie yeah. rigged this up, right? This is part yeah. of Ricky, a, Richie's The rocket-powered ejection seat. <laughs> but the, see, when this was, as the movie was moving toward this moment, because of course you have like the the the, it's like a torpedo or a rocket tube or something that they're going to shoot themselves out of, and I'm mm-hmm. like, wait, I remember somebody coming out in a water ski and like an explosion behind them. Is that this? And I'm like, that's Deep Rising. Yeah, there's a sea do in Deep Rising. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> And this is you're right. This is basically the same movie, right? I mean, yeah. for the beats, the beats of this movie are the same, pretty much. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure someone almost dies on a ship uh, 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 in in Deep Rising, and then shows back up later. Yeah, it's all the same beats. Yeah, this is just what you did. Um, so then, uh, but they do have to like pull another uh, explosion. This one, the big explosion. I think that's maybe, even though Joel Silver didn't produce this movie, it's the hallmark, the whammy chart. You have to, you have to kind of, you have your big explosion. You follow that up with your bigger explosion. Did they actually yeah. blow that ship up like for real, or was that a model? Uh, it was a model. Uh, I was gonna say that felt modelish. Okay. That was a model, but it was decent. It looked good. 
It was decent. It I good. wanted I wanted one more big explosion. Yeah. Like you always get the explosions, and then you get the one at the end that destroys the entire ship. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like I wanted one more explosion where the whole thing goes up, but that was pretty decent. You need that one like Holly, the the barn and the wraith. Do you know what yeah. the budget on this movie was? I do. The budget was seventy five million. Jesus. Holy shit. Jesus. Do you want to know how much? It... Ninety nine dollars. Yeah. Do you want to know how much it made? Twenty five dollars. Thirty million dollars. <laughs> 25. 30, 30 million. Ah. Oh, yeah? That's oh. like 30.6 or so. Yeah, just over 30 million, yeah. So what All did, right. I mean, did you look up, I mean, what was that, you know, what it was attributed to, or did it open against something, or did people just didn't care? Um, It was supposed to be a summer release, and then they changed it to a January release. Ouch, and the dumping third, ground. And um, Deep Rising had already come out, and that didn't do well, and everyone was getting the same vibes and there just wasn't an interest for this movie was sphere sphere was also the year before right there was 1998 i mean sphere's poster and the poster for virus look very similar yeah um it just does not look all that good they all look like they look like alien clones based on the advertising so Mm -hmm. i mean i can see that people are just like yeah okay it's gonna be one of these you know there's nothing, there's no characters that, you know, it's just you have star marquee value, but you really don't have, like, there's nothing to these. You've seen it before, yeah. you saw it yeah. done better. Yeah. Um, I think it was the word of mouth that this is not a fucking space movie is what ruined it for people. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet. That's how Sean's going to be selling it to everybody that he knows. We're not, it's not a fucking yeah. space movie. It's not a fucking space movie, and I know what you were thinking. It's not. Yeah. Well, this Did you movie... guys feel like some of the effects looked like like 10 years older than when this movie actually came out. I feel like the effects, like the way they moved specifically, the like animatronic nature looked like some fucking like Chuck E. Cheese band shit. It looked like some Johnny Five stuff. It, yeah. You yeah. Talking about exactly. The yeah. Number five is live, man. Yeah. No, yeah. honestly, I didn't have a problem <laughs> with the actual effects. I mean, whether they're look like they're from this era or not, like I'm pretty much good with, Almost everything that happened in this. Even the CGI really effects I was good with. I thought some looked good and some looked really bad. It was yeah. really inconsistent, I thought. I like some fleshy robots. But are you talking... Yeah, I mean, the practical stuff, I thought... But you could tell toward the end they were really leaning on the, the, the CGI composite stuff. And then oh, it's yeah. like... It, it obviously... You know, the, the composites don't match. So you're like, well, that looks fake as shit. But the actual modeling and texturing and all that stuff on the robots was like, eh, okay. If it was by itself, you know, if this was in a... It's more just the way they move for me. It's so herky-jerky. Everything looked like it. you could kick it over, you know? So it didn't seem very <laughs> threatening. It does feel uh, like uh, like Runaway. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. all those. Yeah. Very runaway. much like Runaway. That boxy little robot had a gun. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like that, yeah. Not too threatening unless it's got a gun. Mm-hmm. That's your, yeah, the Erector Set Robots. Yeah. Uh, Check out our episode on Runaway. That's right. Go back and and check (laughs) that out. So, unless Sean brings it back to the freak show. So, um, Uh, uh, there is a... um, You know what? Screw you. I'm going to check the date on that. I I think that was only like two years ago, Sean. Yeah, Yeah, I know. I got a while. We were all here for that. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> um so but there is a fake out ending which is another uh a trope of these movies favorite part. <laughs> it's so stupid what happens uh they're all on like pieces of the shipwreckage floating and jamie lee curtis goes over to like check to see if cliff curtis is still alive and she like shakes his shoulder and he turns to look at her and like half of his face is like he's like two-faced from batman it's like half taken off and um and then he like lurches like towards her like he's gonna attack her and then it smash cuts to her like waking up it was that not the whole thing but just that part with cliff curtis was a dream did were you scared did it get you no i thought i was like i well okay i went through a lot of emotions really quickly because at first i was like oh no they're gonna do that here we go again ending and then it was like no it's worse than that it's a fake out (laughs) dream and i was like uh, at first, I was like, "Fuck this movie," and I was like, "Double fuck this movie." <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. I thought that you know, like you pull up the one side of his face is all mangled, then they pull up the next side and he's a robot, but that never happened. Right? It was just kind of like, "Nope, it was a fake out dream." Awesome. Mm-hmm. 
That's so. the better choice, filmmakers. And then it's Jurassic Park. We're on a helicopter <laughs> flying over the ocean. Yeah. yeah. Never, never with the sunset behind you. Always the sunset in front of you. Because I mean, yeah, always yeah. flying towards the sunset. Uh, yeah. Sir, pilot, the uh, land is back that way. But look at that <laughs> fucking sunset. <laughs> Going for it. Yeah. Beautiful. No, oh, it's a brilliant, brilliant piece of work. But you're probably curious after listening to us talk about it, now that we've just watched it, would we recommend that you watch it if you're still on the fence? Is Virus a movie that you need to see? Well, I'll tell you what, listener. We're going to let you know. But first of all, we're going to read some of your mail. And to do that, we're going to need the assistance of our mailman, and his name is Igor. Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Igor, are you related to anybody? anybody? Like, this seemed like some pretty gnarly looking dudes in there that you might know. Like, you friends with anybody in this one? Do we know he's not a robot? Like there, there might be parts. There might be parts of him in that movie. That's very true. <laughs> yeah, they were in the movie. Then we got him. We put him together and brought him back to life with a little bit of lightning that thinks for itself. Has, you know? Are we like he hasn't grabbed anyone and tried to make something out of them? Has he? Like, are we sure? Have you, when's the last time you checked his basement? Well, that I mean, only happens on the weekend. Right Have now. you cleaned his stall lately, Colin? <laughs> I don't go in there. Are you kidding me? No. Yeah, Sean, so that's a good point. We have not see, seen Igor in person in, you know, a while now, so. It's been a while. Who he knows could be building some what shit. he's off doing. Yeah. Well, we'll tell you what, listener, if you want to join the Freak Show family, we hope you'll do. We, uh, you can email, or sorry, you can get a hold of us on uh, Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You can follow along on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And you can also follow along on Instagram for the time of your life. Grant Parrish writes in about virus. And he says, are you guys okay at the Freak Show? Is quarantine hitting everyone a little hard? And we, we all cry out for help in different ways. You don't have to do this to yourself. Your listeners <laughs> will love you and tune in if you watch good <laughs> movies as well. As we mentioned earlier, we're all going a little crazy. I guess so. Uh, Travis Legler says, I don't hate this movie, but I know others do, and I love it. It's not a bad waste of time for the special effects. Some are enjoyable. The story is so-so, but overall, it's not a bad way to be lulled into a nap on the couch some Sunday afternoon. I can see myself watching this hungover. I was going to say, is that a glowing review? It's a movie that'll help you sleep. The Cure for Insomnia. Is the movie virus? See, I'm trying to, you know, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Uh, Nick Siebel writes in and says, I remember actually seeing this in theaters. That's the only recollection I have of the movie. Uh, he has no <laughs> other comment or opinion. I guess the movie sucked that much. He says we should enjoy it. Um, Michael Whitaker says he only watched it once, but from what he can remember, everyone seemed perpetually damp. <laughs> yeah. yeah. True. So, many, so many rashes after they got off filming this movie. And uh, Sean Roger, after hearing that we were watching Virus, he said, oh dear. <laughs> uh, two weeks ago, we watched a movie called The Curse of the Werewolf. Uh, Feline Fatal said, uh, 2010's The Wolfman owes a lot to this film, as well as the original Lon Chaney Jr. one. Like you guys said in the episode, Benicio Del Toro's whole look as the Wolfman was much inspired by Oliver Reed's in Curse of the Werewolf. Plus, Benicio even had Reed's hairstyle. It was like Benicio Del Toro was the love child of Oliver Reed and Lon Chaney Jr. Yeah, because yeah, he, 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 he had the snout in the new Wolfman, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. Um, Jacob Lars. I like that Colin looked up. To look at the action figure. <laughs> I was checking him. Like, yep, he's got, he's got the snout on there. Yeah, I think everybody I'm says. The listeners who can't see you, he did look up at it. <laughs> it's because of the the white uh, shirt, right? Is that the thing? Because the 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 Wolfman, the 2010 Wolfman, uh, is not yeah. a silver. But uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, Jacob Laws says I can also see where Rick Baker took inspiration for his Wolfman design. Uh, Peter Gadd about Oliver Reed says to me, he'll always be Athos from the three Musketeers. 
Um, mm. I don't know if you guys remember, but before Superman movie, the Salkinds, right? The producers that got famous for that did the Three Musketeers and the Four Musketeers. I think that was their big, like, we'll do two movies, then we'll cut it in half. And then they didn't pay their actors for two movies, and there's lawsuits and all that stuff. Uh, that was one of those. Bullshit. Cheap um, bastards. Simon Carter said, Oliver Reed had a house about five minutes away from where I live. There's several local pubs that have a plaque on the wall commemorating the date that he was barred from the establishment. He would get hammered. He would get hammered. He'd climb up the chimney from the inside and piss off the roof of the pub. Seemed like a solid dude. Oh, that's funny. That's I'd right. like to request that more listeners tell us about celebrities that live or hang out in their hometowns. Yeah. Yeah, more, more so the bar records they hold. Yeah, please. <laughs> yeah, and if you want to hear our stories about the legendary drunk of uh, Oliver Reed, you got to listen to our mm-hmm. Curse of the Werewolf episode. Uh, Rusty Ryan writes in and says, another great episode, and or another great and enjoyable episode from everyone on Curse of the Werewolf. I'm very par- partial to the Hammer line because I saw many of them during their original theatrical releases in the 70s. Uh, in The Devils, uh, so The Devils is a movie with Oliver Reed that we mentioned on the show. He says yeah. Oliver Reed easily gives his best performance as a less than pious priest who experiences an actual spiritual awakening as he's tried as a heretic. Uh, Vanessa Redgrave is absolutely mesmerizing as a frustrated hunchback nun obsessed with Reed who mi- masturbates with a charred femur bone. Do I have your attention now? Yeah, I'll watch this movie. All right. Yep, let's watch it, guys. That's right. You had me. You had me at not exactly pious uh, uh, reverend or whatever, Uh, but a hunchback nun. (laughs) Hunchback nun. And it's Vanessa Redgrave. The The Devils is the movie that was banned by the Catholic Church. I think Warner Brothers made an agreement with them, which must be still been EB in effect because you cannot find a legitimate copy. Of that movie, at least in the states. So even though it was on yeah. Shutter a little while ago for like a couple months, Shutter had it. So yeah. Uh, so that brings us to the most exciting part of our episode, where we're going to go around the table, the virtual table, the virtual round table, and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, Virus. And we're going to start with Michaela. Michaela, what did you think uh, about the Jamie Lee Curtis and Donald Sutherland star? And there's a bald one in there too. What did you think of Virus? Um, I mean, I knew nothing about this movie going into it. I didn't really look up anything about it. I was a little concerned it was going to be like a pandemic contagion movie. And I was like, I emotionally can't deal with that right now. Um, so I was relieved that it wasn't that. Um, <laughs> but like, this story is something you've seen a million times. This is Aliens, The Thing, The Abyss, anything we've named for dummies you know this is like oh oh the thing is too complex and too dour for you well let's strip it down and make it stupid and like here put it on a boat just watch this it's it's nothing you haven't seen before so i'm a little torn because like i don't think it has a lot of redeeming qualities but i also laughed a lot watching it (laughs) like i and it moves at a good clip it does have a good pace i don't didn't feel any major lulls in the like plot or anything um it's a shame that like Jamie Lee Curtis is in a movie and I think she's like completely forgettable. Um, I don't necessarily think that's her fault, but like the, you look at the cast of this movie, you look at like the time it came out and it's like, it should be a guaranteed hit. And I think all the people that are in it, I can see why they agreed to do it. You know, I can see why they thought it was going to be successful. Like this thing had been done so many times before. Why wouldn't it work now? I think they also expected the effects to look a lot better than they probably did. Um, I, I think I gotta say no on it. I, it's not a hard no. I don't hate this movie. It didn't offend me. We've obviously watched way worse stuff, but it just, it's so stupid. The characters are so stupid. The dialogue is like the most rote, dumb as shit. Like I was cackling at some of the stuff they were saying, like the people that are in it that are good actors aren't really given a lot to do to make it worth your time. So I think I got a pass, but it's like, it's a light pass. I, like I said, I don't have any ill will towards this movie. If you want to watch it, that's fine. But I, I don't think, I feel like there's a lot of other things, especially now in quarantine that would be better served with your time. So. Is that, is that the overall um, thing hanging over these? It's like in quarantine, you could do better. So. I mean, yeah, I just don't think that like, I don't think I'll remember anything from this movie going forward, you know? 
All right. Well, Colin. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, I, Sorry, I, cat I, was being an asshole. I'm pretty much on board with that review. That's pretty much it. It's like, I don't hate the movie. Um, it's just, uh, I, you have seen every single piece of it done somewhere before. It doesn't bring anything really new to it at all. I see it as, you know, it's a playground for a visual effects guy to do visual effects, but like, I don't know. I, I you kind of hope that you know if you, if that was you, you'd choose a uh, a different project. Well, you don't want to be pit off either. That was the guy who did the uh, the, the visual effects for like uh, City of Lost Children and Delicatessen, and he graduated to Hollywood and made Catwoman. So you don't want to go that way either. Who's like? A, is there a visual effects? Check out guy? our episode on Catwoman. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there are. There's like tons of visual effects guys who go on to make uh, films. Uh, this is, I mean, it, it didn't do anything for, what's his name? John Bruno. Was it? Yeah. John yeah. Bruno. Yeah. Um, I know Jamie Lee Curtis, apparently the story was she tried to get him fired off the movie because, uh, you know, mm-hmm. he, it wasn't moving along correctly or whatever. He probably because he was more in love with the, what he was doing with the visual effects than anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. she was, she was really lobbying for Steve Miner, but he was busy on Dawson's Creek. <laughs> Steve Miner, she had just worked with the Weren't previous year on uh, Halloween uh, H2O, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, yeah. So, okay. So my, my impression of it was that this is a movie that low budget filmmakers try to make now. When you see like uh, all these guys making these like direct to Netflix or, you know, they, they make a movie, uh, you know, a local regional movie and then try to sell it to like a video company for distribution. Somebody picks it up. Only this one has a budget, but it feels exactly like that. This is like a fan's, uh, you know, uh, haunted spaceship movie. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah, I, he got to do his version of Alien or The Thing or, you know, any of those that uh, you're talking about. And I really didn't think that Underwater was all that. And now after watching this, I'm like, I want to go see Underwater again because, uh, yeah, I think it was uh, it was it was a lot better <laughs> than this. Um yeah, uh, the characters are just uh, non-existent. Uh, the only two, like I said, that made an impression were Donald Sutherland and Joanna Pacula. I'm not saying necessarily their performances, uh, just their characters. It's like I knew who they were, what their motivations were, and everybody else is just kind of running around. Jamie Lee Curtis is wasted. Uh, William Baldwin, is he wasted? I don't know. He, I think this was at the end of his leading man career. You know, did that get going with... Um, it seemed Fair like- game. Uh, that was that was before <laughs> this and after Backdraft. I was trying to think like what was yeah. before Backdraft. Backdraft uh, is the first thing I think of. Yeah. yeah, same. But there must have yeah. been something that they decided like he would be good as a lead in a movie, and then he had a string of movies. And I think Virus was at the end of it. And uh, I did actually just see him recently. He was in that Nicholas Winding Refn show on Amazon, uh, Too Old to Die Young. So he's still out there, still working. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, long story short, I think I'm going to tell you, you can skip Virus. Uh, just go watch one of the movies it rips off. Unless you've seen those a hundred times. And then you can watch, you know, yeah, I was going to say what? Deep Rising? No. Oh, that one's bad, too. Yeah, Deep Rising. Come on. Um, it's got Tree Williams. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to say, yeah, but he's bad. <laughs> uh, I know. Jamie Lee Curtis, greater than Treat Williams in uh, in. Deep Rising. So I'm going to say you can pass on uh, Virus. Sean, what would you think? Uh, yeah, I think we're all pretty much having the same feelings about this movie. Um, I mean, there's a few things I like about it. Um, I like the effects, um, practical. It's um, It does kind of get, um, as far as the effects go, though, it does just seem like they start out with small versions and then just give you bigger versions of the same thing. Like, mm-hmm. we get hints of other things. Like, I like the, the people that have been repurposed as robots. That might have been cooler mm-hmm. to see more of those. Yeah. Um, but again, it is 1999. You know, they're trying. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, eh. you know, it's just kind of meh. Just like uh, like everybody else said. It's just, it's not, uh, there's not enough there for you to be like, I want to watch that movie. Uh, it, it, you know. I'm not angry at it, like Michaela said. It's just kind of there, and it's not... Uh, there's other shit worth watching before you get to Virus. It is down on that list. Um, I would rather watch Deep Rising. Uh, uh, or, I'm just going to do a Treat Williams marathon after this. It's like this and <laughs> The Phantom, basically, because he's great in The Phantom. 
and he's Dead the, Heat. He's, he's the yeah. bomb. Dead Heat the rewatch. There you go. And, and Dead Heat he rewatch. Yes. Yeah. Wouldn't that be like a Baldwin Treat Williams double feature then? If you did the shadow in this. Well, the Phantom. The Phantom. The Phantom. He's a bad guy. The, the Phantom. Phantom. Yeah. But there you go. I always There's get a good those one. movies mixed <laughs> up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the Phantom's way better. Always. Um, but, better. but yeah, I mean, this movie. It's this movie's dumb. Um, I I don't <laughs> I don't like Donald Sutherland. I don't I don't really like these characters. They're all kind of dumb. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's not an offensive movie, but it's also like, it, it might've been better if it was offensive. Cause then you might have a reason to watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, but as of right now, you don't, you uh, given so I'm going to, I'm going to pass on virus. Holly, why? Um, <laughs> <laughs> this movie has been in my back pocket for a while. Um, and it, it just felt Burning like a hole, it was, was it? It just felt like it was time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Got to get it out there at some point. Probably because I, I assumed that everyone would immediately think what Michaela was afraid of, that it was going to be like a virus movie, like, you know, break or something. I was like, oh, that's not what we're getting. It's mm-hmm. going to be great. Um, I completely agree with everything you guys are saying. However, I'm in the camp that it's a hilariously bad movie. Like, it's funny. So take... It's completely unoriginal. I agree with that. You know, it, it's taking things from movies that are actually good movies. You know, we, we, The Abyss, The Saint. Like, we've, we've talked about all the things that it rips off. But this is the hilariously bad version of those movies. And that's why I enjoy it. Like, Colin was saying, he was, like, laughing so hard his stomach was hurting. Like, I think this movie's hysterical because it's so terrible. It's so terrible. And it's so much fun to laugh at. And... I, I think that the effects are actually really good. I think they're they're uh, I think they play. I think they're effective. I think like I agree that the CGI obviously in 1999 it's it's not going to be all that great, and um, we're going to see the discrepancies. We're going to see like why it's bad. Um, but I like the practical effects. I think they're really good. I think it's kind of gross in several parts, which I appreciate that it's that effective. Um, so yeah, between it having a like Michaela said, it moves at a good pace. It's not boring. You know, you jump right into a really dramatic like ship about to go down kind of scene, and it's it's really it's kind of exciting. Um, and it does have elements that I really enjoy. I think it's so much fun. It's so stupid. It's the dumbest movie, but that's why it's fun, and I love laughing at it. And I, I think it's hilarious. It's not going to be a movie I watch all the time, but I hadn't seen it in a couple of years. I was like, eh, it's time. It's so stupid. I want to laugh. So uh, I want to recommend it. I think it's fun. And we watch a lot of hilariously bad movies. I don't know. That's what we do. I like it. I'm going to recommend Virus. Well, there you go. That's the final word on Virus. Uh, so next week, that means we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by... Michaela. Uh, what shall we be watching next week? Well, we're going to continue on to our next stop on this summer blockbuster failure event. Oh, no. <laughs> we're going to revisit a movie that is turning 10 years old this year, Jonah Hex. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Holly, that's why I asked how you felt about Gatling guns earlier. <laughs> that's right. a fair question. <laughs> Jonah Hex, the legendary comic book character brought to life or put the to rest? The minute movie. Yeah, Jonah Hex. by Josh Brolin and Megan Fox. So that's yeah. next week. John Malkovich. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah, guys, we're gonna take. You guys are gonna remember a lot of things you forgot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show, boys, boils and ghouls. Uh, until then, the basement is going dark.